Let us celebrate this morning worship service by standing and singing in number 185 from ancient Bodhinus.
Therefore, I pray and beseech you as many as are here present to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying with me. Let us all confess our sins before the Almighty God by saying the general confession prayer. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from the ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against the holy laws. We have left undone those things which you ought to have done. And we have done those things which you ought not to have done. And there is no help in us. But thou, Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Rest all thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus, O Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty God, Heavenly Father, who of His great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins uh, to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto Him, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and bring us everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's all do this, say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us trespasses, as we forgive the trespasses against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Oh, 
first lesson shall be read for us. The first reading is taken from Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 to 23. I repeat, Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 to 23. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. All things were created by him and for him. He is therefore all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior, but now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you wholly in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. If you continue in your faith, established and firm, not moved from the hope held out in the gospel, this is the gospel that you have heard and that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven and of which I, Paul, have become a servant. Here ends the reading. Praise Thee, O God, we acknowledge Thee to be the Lord. All the earth that worship Thee, the Father everlasting. To the angels cry aloud, the hands and all the parts therein. To the cherubim, seraphim, continually do cry holy 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 lord god of sabaoth and another full of the majesty oh, of thy glory the glorious company of the apostles praise thee the goodly fellowship of the prophets, praise thee. The noble army of martyrs, praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world, doth acknowledge thee. The Father, all men infinite majesty. Thine honorable, true, and only Son, holds the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou the King of glory, O Christ, Thou art the everlasting Son, of the Father, when thou lookest upon thee to deliver man, thou dost not abhor the virgin's womb. When thou hast overcome the sharpness of death, thou dost open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage govern them and let them
them up forever Day by day we magnify Thee And we worship Thy name Ever world without end Mouth safe, O Lord To keep us this day without sin O Lord, have mercy upon us Have mercy upon us O Lord, let the mercy lighten upon us As our trust is in Thee O Lord, in Thee have I trusted Let me never be confounded Now the second lesson shall be read for us the second lesson is taken from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 20, beginning at verse 24. The Gospel according to St. John, chapter 20, verses 24 to 29. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of his nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet have believed. Here ended the reading. God add his blessings to the reading of his holy word. Oh, 
date appointed for the first Sunday of the Easter, let us pray. O Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, who has given your only Son, the firstborn of all creation, to die for our sins, grant us so perfectly and without any doubt to believe in his resurrection, so that we continue to be faithful on this firm foundation, not allowing ourselves to be shaken from the hope that we have heard and learned from your gospel, through Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forevermore. Let us pray the calling for peace. O God, who art the author of peace and the lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we surely, trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. For grace, O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same way that with thy mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our duties may be ordered by, the, by thy governance to do always that is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us all together sing hymn number 41 from present worship. 41 from present worship.
let us sit to the Lord in prayer. O most loving Heavenly Father, we come into your holy presence this precious day, O Father, your holy day, the resurrection day, even as we stand in your awesome presence, O Father, pray that your heavens be opened up and shower upon all your richest blessings that you have set for your people on this day, who serve or call upon your name. Lord, even as we meditate your word, O Father, pray your Holy Spirit anoint us, empower us, enable us, O Father, to meditate your word in all its clarity and with all its meaning. Speak to us and visit us and strengthen us, O Lord, through your word and through your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I greet you all in the blessed name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and a warm welcome to you all to this morning worship service. As we have just uh, celebrated the wonderful resurrection day of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Easter, and after that Easter, this is the first Sunday in the Easter, and we praise God for bringing us thus far, uh, enabling us to celebrate His resurrection. And even, even now, even as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, Acknowledging Him as our Lord and as our God. And that is our theme today. Acknowledging Jesus Christ as our Lord and as our God. So dear church, this morning even as we uh, meditate this word, we got to understand that acknowledging Jesus as Lord, as God, is the most important call that God has given to each and every one of us in this life. We acknowledge so many people to whom we are so grateful, who helped us in the crisis situation, who has indeed been a great uh, you know, friend of us, uh, who really comforted, maybe prayed for us, and who really uh, is uh, proved uh, himself or herself to be a reliable person on this earth. We are so grateful to those wonderful people who are generous and who are loving and who understand us, who forgive us. We acknowledge them and especially this time we acknowledge the wonderful services that our doctors and nurses and the police personnel and the municipality uh, employees are doing in the society and in the hospitals, putting their lives at the risk only to save the people who are fighting this virus. We really praise God for them and we pray that God bless them and protect them even as they serve the humanity people from this pandemic. I especially I also acknowledge the services of our own church members who are in the medical profession and also in the public service who are in the front line serving the Lord. God bless you. Our prayers are always with you and uh, be assured that the Lord's presence is with you and His supernatural care and His security and His protection is always around you. So don't be disgraced but always be encouraged. His presence is with you to strengthen and sustain and to empower you even as you proceed, progress in your service for the humanity in fight of this pandemic. So we see here the acknowledging Jesus Christ is a wonderful experience and a responsibility of every child of God. And especially even as we see here in this our own uh, text where we see John 20th chapter 24 to 29 verse, we see that Thomas, he in a way, after all his search and all his research, he came to the census only to acknowledge Jesus Christ as his Lord and his God. It is not the Thomas who really acknowledged Jesus first of all, but there are some more people who acknowledge Jesus as the Lord, as God. You know, as we see uh, in the accounts of the Gospels where in Matthew 16, 16, Peter acknowledges Jesus saying that you are the Messiah, the Son of God and uh, you are the uh, living, you are the living God, you are the Son of the living God, the Messiah. That is a great uh, you know, acknowledgement that Peter has done and also when we come to the conclusion of the Gospels before the crucifixion of Jesus, that night when he was caught on the Monday Thursday night and on the Good Friday he was 
presented before Pilate and uh, uh, for the, uh, and the, the, the uh, high priest for the, for the judgment. And that is the time where the thieves, the Roman soldiers who acknowledged him as the king of Jews. You know, in Mark 15, 18, you find that they have, they have made a crown of thrones and put it on his head. And they have put upon him the purple robe and said, Hail the King of Jews. That acknowledgement is an acknowledgement, but with sarc sarcastic way, in a very sarcastic way, you know, in a very humiliating way. And even they have put a board upon uh, the nail, a small board upon the cross saying, uh, you know, Jesus, the King of Jews. I and R I, you find that Jesus, uh, you know, Nazarene, Rex, something like that. So we see that, yes, people acknowledge him, but in a very sarcastic way, in a very in a humiliating way. And also there is another person who acknowledged Jesus as the Lord, a thief on the cross, the thief on the right side, called Decimus. When he saw Jesus Christ being humiliated by the people and persecuted and nailed to the cross, along with him, and then Jesus began to pray for his enemies saying, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. And he continued to pray that prayer. This thief observed the Lord so closely and so closely observed him that he came to a conclusion to acknowledge him as the Lord by praying a prayer saying, Lord, when you come with your kingdom, remember me. Remember me, O Lord, when you come in your kingdom. That is a great acknowledgement. A thief, you know, without much hesitation, without any doubt, in faith and in the fear of the Lord, he acknowledged Jesus as Lord. He addressed him as Lord and uh, taken over the paradise and the heart of Jesus. So, acknowledging Jesus as the Lord and God. Yes, this is a wonderful experience. For any person, and every person should be to do that. As I already told, there are two great confessions in the Bible, especially in the New Testament, which really uh, are so great. And as I already told, that Peter saying, "You are the Son of the Living God, the Messiah," in Matthew 16:16. 16, 16. That is the first affirmation, uh, acknowledgement of Jesus as the Lord. The second is this: Thomas saying, "That my Lord, my God." For Peter's confession, we see that. It was not the revelation of the flesh and blood, but the Father in heaven. That's what Jesus said. Peter, Simon Barzona, it is not the flesh and blood that revealed to you, but it is my Father who is in heaven who revealed this truth to you. You know, Peter confessing, saying, You are the Son of the living God. That is the revelation of the Father to Peter. So there is no matter of flesh and blood, but in Thomas' case, it is based uh, upon the flesh and blood. His confession is based upon the flesh and blood. You see that Peter represents the community of the faithful believers you know, who trust God, whether there be or no factual evidences. But whereas Thomas, in a sense, represents the spirit of our age, the scientific age, which only, you know, is satisfied with Nothing less than the evidence, you know, as the evidence of the senses. That's what we call it as a scientific spirit. That is saying, he says that seeing is believing. Unless I see, I don't believe. This is the spirit of this age. People want to see the miracles, see something happening. Then only they will believe, otherwise they don't believe. There is no question of faith or the faith factor in the humanity. That's the reason Christ was surprised even he said that when the Son of Man come on this earth for the second time, will he find faith on this earth? Because the world is coming to such an extent where they, where they don't believe anything without seeing and experiencing. So that's what is the spirit of this age, the scientific spirit. So first thing that we got to see from our text is this, that when Jesus appeared to the disciples, Thomas was not with them. Verse 24 of John chapter 20. Thomas was not with them. You know, now the, 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 this is something serious to note about Thomas. 
Then where was he? Where is he wandering around? You know, while the ten disciples, due to the lack of, due to the fear of Jews, shut themselves in the room, or we can say self quarantine you know, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the present vocabulary, they have locked them down in the upper room. Whereas Thomas is wandering, is wandering alone with the doubts and unbelief. And to be, you see that, to be, to be, to be alone. To be wandering alone is a very dangerous state in anybody's life and especially in a believer's life. In a believer's life. It is not good for him, even physically and also above all spiritually and mentally, to be alone, wandering alone in doubts and in fear and in frustration. That's what we see here that Thomas is in this condition. So it gives a great opportunity, you know, to Satan to weaken the faith of a believer mentally and spiritually weakening their faith that will lead definitely to weaken them even physically so remember that even Satan approached Eve you know when she was alone she was alone we also see that David fell into the sin with Bathsheba when he was alone alone that's the reason we got to understand that when we are alone we got to be conscious of our thoughts. When we are in the people, we got to be conscious of our words. Mind your words when you are with people. Mind your thoughts when you are alone. Because these two are very dangerous. That may lead you into danger and uh, destruction. So we see that although the ten disciples were ten in number, ten in number, they, were, they, they, they have become weak in their faith. And they're so uh, filled with fear and, uh, you know, uh, of, 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 of distress. But we see that the fellowship, the fellowship sustained their feeble faith. They're weak in their faith, but it is their fellowship with one another that sustained their feeble faith. And that's what, you know, we got to learn from these disciples, you know, that, uh, that they have strengthened one another. They have encouraged one another. Though even today, as we are all, all alone in our own homes, Unable to meet as a community in the church. But still we are encouraging one another through this kind of broadcast maybe. Through kind of video calling or calling one another. At least trying to keep in touch with one another. Encouraging, praying and, uh, and, and speaking to one another. Comfort and peace. You know that is needed. That is needed in our life. And uh, that was, uh, that was, that's what the disciples have done. Though they are fearful. Though they are weakened in their faith, but they have sustained because they are in fellowship with one another. But we see that after that, we knew that the, that the Lord appeared and strengthened them in a, in a very uh, wonderful way. We also should understand that in, according to Matthew 18, 20, the Lord promised that when, when two or three are gathered in my name, I will be in their midst. And the Lord who has promised will always fulfill his promise and that's what has happened the Lord is in their midst because they have gathered in his name they have gathered in his name but here is Thomas who is walking all alone he is wandering all alone in all his faith in all his uh, you know, loneliness and lack of faith and frustration is is really walking all alone so we see that we got to learn a lesson from Thomas we got to we should not wander alone in our faith journey we all desperately need fellowship with one another and above all with God above all with God because uh, this is what the Lord intends for his people that we continue to maintain our fellowship with one another and above all with God because it not it is not only for our well-being but it is also the prayer of our Lord Jesus Christ in his high priestly prayer in John 17 20 to 23 we see that just like just as you and I are one O oh father let them let them all be one you know that is the prayer of Jesus for the unity of the disciples so that they may be united and may be sustained and strengthened in their faith and in their faith journey because out of fellowship will lead to weakness in faith when we are out of fellowship we will be weakened in faith and that's what is happening with Thomas that's what is happening with Thomas. When he, Thomas came back, 
to the disciples he said that i don't believe that the lord is risen unless i am i put my hands my fingers in his wounds i don't believe the resurrection of our lord so thomas is something like that he is wandering all alone let us learn a lesson from thomas that not to wander all alone though you are alone now locked down in your own situation in your own room maybe in a very different part away from your home want very much to come back to home but you are unable to go because of the restrictions that government has laid because of this lockdown situation wherever you are know that the lord is with you the lord is with you you may be very much want to be with your people but the situation is such that you just cannot go or travel this is the time that you got to strengthen your relationship with the lord in the word in prayer the lord will be with you the lord will comfort you and strengthen you and he will not allow you to feel uh, that loneliness he will empower you with his presence and he is always will be always you know with you with his angels protecting you encouraging you empowering you so dear child of god don't feel down that you are all alone you are very much in the presence of the lord just like christ promised when with two or three gathered together to you and god two and holy spirit three are gathered he is with you and he is with you to comfort and strengthen you don't you know be wicked in your faith but always encourage yourself in the lord sustain yourself in your faith because the lord is there to protect you secondly we got to see the life of thomas we see from the text that our thomas seems to be Uh, a doubter in a very uh, natural way he is a natural he seems to be a doubter that was that is his uh, nature in a way he was convinced by the risen lord and uh, thomas stands out for two great virtues these are the two great virtues even you and i need to have and learn from thomas though naturally we are pessimistic naturally we don't have that much faith though we are doubting people are people of uh, of not of that renowned faith but still let us learn these two great virtues and see that they are in us because the lord want to see that in you and me the first thing is this he wanted to be certain he wanted to be certain thomas wanted to be certain he absolutely refused to say that he understood what he did not understand what he did not understand he refused to say that i understand you know there was uncompromising honesty about him he would never still his doubts by pretending that they did not exist they did not exist he was not the kind of person who would recite a creed without understanding what he was uh, what 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 it was or what he said many times we read our apostles creed a nation creed and we sing hymns and we read the bible we say prayers but how seldom are we really conscious of what we are saying and what we are singing and what we are praying or what we are listening let us be mindful and let us really be certain of what i am what we are singing and what we are really really saying you know prayers and you know you know uh, day to day uh, conversation with the people around and especially with the lord himself so he he had to be sure and he was quite right in his search he wanted to be certain you know to be certain is no wrong because it is a sign it is not a sign of weak faith but it is a sign to be strengthened in faith to put it short thomas wanted to experience his own personal easter as i already said in our in the last easter's message to celebrate your own easter and thomas maybe wanted to celebrate his own personal easter just like mary magdalene celebrated her own easter by waiting at the tomb tarrying at the tomb and receiving the resurrection message of jesus the good news of the resurrection of jesus christ you know even paul expressed the desire in uh, philippians 3 then and 11 we see that i want to know christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his suffering becoming like him in his death and so somehow to attain the resurrection from the dead even paul wanted to celebrate his own resur- easter or resurrection i wanted to know the power of his resurrection 
that should be the desire of every child of god that is it's not great deal that we worship along with the people and celebrate the easter or the lord's day but to be alone and celebrate the personal experience or the worship that you really have with your god the private celebration of your fellowship with the lord is more valued in heaven than the public celebration that you do along with the people no fellowship is needed but we just cannot bank upon the fellowship itself but like thomas we got to be certain of our celebration of easter along with the lord he wanted to be certain with that and uh, there is nothing wrong in that because he wanted to be strengthened in his faith not to just believe what he didn't what he didn't understand what he didn't understand second thing that we got to understand is this that uh, he confessed what he believed he confessed what he believed when he saw when he was sure of seeing the lord and his wounds he confessed saying my lord my god my god my lord he he doubted in order to be sure and uh, when he achieved he dedicated himself completely to his master completely to his master yes he has a desire to see the risen lord and has a determination to experience the risen lord and this desire and determination made him diligent in carrying the message of the gospel you know to our great land india to our great land india you know you got to understand that no other disciple traveled so far or so long with the gospel to reach the far lands it is thomas 2000 years ago who traveled all alone to this great land india with the gospel of jesus christ mind you my dear friends it is not the british who brought the gospel to the to, to this land it is not the english people who brought this land it is not a foreign religion it is thomas 2000 years ago who brought this wonderful gospel of jesus christ into this great land and because of that you and i are now the children of god because of this holy man's foot touched this land and made this land so holy the ripples of his visit and the touch of his you know of his message of the gospel is echoing still in our land and this is a wonderful you know life of thomas so we see that in our text that our lord appeared to thomas to dispel the doubts now question is this why the lord has to take such a personal interest to make himself uh, appear, uh or to appear once again to thomas why is what so special yes it is special because christ saw you and me it is because of you and me christ appeared specially to thomas because you and i are so special to jesus because Christ appeared to Thomas and strengthened his faith and this diligent disciple who dedicated himself after clarifying his doubt has taken up a great journey to reach this wonderful land called India so that you and I our forefathers and our generations to come may come to the Lord Jesus Christ in this saving grace the Lord has seen you and me this was possible only when But Thomas has dedicated himself by these things convinced by receiving the message and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ in a very empirical way as our Lord doesn't depend on the numbers but he depend on the individuals through whom this number will come through Thomas he wa- he wanted even me to come to him and we are there with him our generations will be there with him our whole nations will be there with him because the lord wanted that and one day in the early church when peter stood up and spoke on the first day 3000 souls were converted are uh, uh, transformed and accepted jesus as the lord and savior so god doesn't depend on the numbers he don't want numbers but he want one diligent witness one diligent disciple like thomas and today the lord is looking to you and me who believed without seeing him who believed without really you know any factual evidence just by faith as reason jesus said you saw and believed but blessed are those who believed in me 
without seeing me. So in that category, you and I come. We saw, we, 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 just, we just believed in the Lord and uh, we have dedicated our lives by His grace and by His wonderful mercy. And therefore, dear congregation, this morning, let me encourage you through the life of Thomas, first thing that we got to take up, a warning is this, never wander alone in your faith. Never wander alone in your life. You need somebody and above all, you need Jesus to be, to strengthen you, to uplift you and to encourage you and to empower you. But when you come back to Jesus, you got to be sure of two things. Be certain of what you believe and confess what you believe. That is what the Lord is expecting from you, you and me. This morning time, even as we celebrate this wonderful Lord's Day after the Easter, let us acknowledge this Lord, Jesus Christ, as our Lord and as our God, and continue to dedicate our lives, and be diligent towards Him, in loving Him, and in uh, living His Word, and proclaiming the same through our word and deed. As the Lord bless His words to us, shall we pray. Gracious loving Father, we thank you, Lord, for speaking to us. Thank you for reminding us, the Lord, the life of Thomas, the way that he acknowledged you as his Lord and his God. Give us the grace of Father that we may continue to acknowledge you as our Lord and as our God. Dedicate ourselves completely and be diligent in our life to witness the same, the gospel of the Lord, to this land of India. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Once again, I greet you all in the blessed name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and uh, God bless you and uh, our dear congregation. Uh, I hope and pray that you're all doing good and keeping fine under the wings of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are praying for you and we are also uh, you know, uh, making all of our efforts to really uh, come to you through this broadcast to empower you and to encourage you through the word of God and through the prayers and the service. God bless you and also thank all the dear ones for really a uh, great uh, encouragement and also giving their wonderful cooperation to record and to edit and to broadcast these wonderful services into your homes. So thank you once again Chandan and uh, Mr. Rakesh Garu here, Mr. Ronald uh, and of course our sex Naparao Garu and our watchman for a great help here even as we uh, uh, are doing this broadcast. Also thank those who have read the Bible lessons uh, in this, for this program and uh, we praise God for their lives also. Uh, once again, uh, let us look to the Lord in our prayers and uh, be strengthened and comforted even as we pray for one another. Let us pray. Most loving Father, we thank you and praise you, Lord, for this blessed day. We thank you, Lord, for the way that you are upholding and strengthening and securing all your people under the wings of grace, O oh Lord. Even as you have enabled us once again to celebrate, to worship you, Lord, in this manner. We commit ourselves once again into mighty hands and especially I pray for all the our church members of Father who are watching this program and also those who are watching this program who are, uh, who are uh, in the far lands. Bless them all, O oh Father. Bless our dear ones, O oh Lord. We pray that your fatherly hands be laid upon thy dear children to bless them, to protect them, to provide them and to secure them, O oh Father, under the wings of grace. And especially we remember the medical personnel uh, Lord, uh, who are in the active service in this time, especially those who belong to our church, oh Lord, all the doctors and nurses and all the uh, medical and non-medical staff who are in the front line, who are really giving their wonderful services, oh Father, in this time of crisis. Lord, I pray that you are fatherly hands be upon thy dear children to protect them and to secure them under the wings of grace, O oh Lord. Even as they, as they treat, the, treat this, uh, uh, Lord, affected patients, so oh Father, even as they counsel them and serve them, pray that your wounded hand to be laid upon their dear children to protect them and uh, let them be your healing instruments, O oh Father. Through them, your healing power may surge into the lives of the patients. 
that they be healed in Jesus name and be restored back O oh father to the normal health I commit all the medical medical personnel and all the police and the, the municipality employees of father who are doing a great job in this time uh, in the society and also in the hospitals bless them O oh father bless their families protect them and secure them under the wings of grace O oh lord we also pray especially for the sick and senior people in our parish in this time of father you protect them O oh father secure them under the wings of grace shield them in your blood O oh lord jesus that thy children may experience your divine touch of healing and restoration and protection in this time we especially pray for thy daughter sheila simon uh, who had a fracture in her foot of oh father touch her and heal her O oh lord in this time cleanse her in your blood and restore her that there be no fracture but that thy daughter be rest healed miraculously by your fatherly touch of father i commit the daughter and the, also all the dear ones who are suffering the lord in one or the other way touch them and heal them and protect them secure them under the wings of grace we also pray for the poor sick and needy in this time who are really uh, suffering a lot because of the lack of uh, ration and the resources and the work lord provide them in a miraculous way protect them o oh lord and uh, take care of them in a special way of father we once again commit ourselves our families and our church and also our nation and the world around in your mighty hands have mercy upon you people of father have mercy upon your people forgive all our sins o lord sins of our nation sins of our families sins of our church sins of our nation sins of our, the whole world lord we have indeed rebelled against you we have sinned against you we have re- indeed gone against your word of father Lord we pray that you have mercy upon your people have mercy upon your people Lord have give peace in our times oh Lord save us and help us oh Lord because there is none other that is there to really fight it for us to secure us to heal us to restore us Lord have mercy upon your people especially in our own nation and also in the uh, Europe and America Lord of thousands and thousands of people are losing their lives oh Lord have mercy have mercy upon them as men and, and, and thousands and thousands of people are lakhs and lakhs of people are in the hospitals of father fighting this virus lord have mercy touch them and heal them cleanse them in your blood i pray that you lord call back this virus stop it of father and remove it from this earth cleanse it from this earth destroy it from the face of this earth that thy children may live in safety and security Lord I pray that your mighty hand be upon your people strengthen your people show thy grace that thy people may come to the knowledge that the Lord is God and there is no other name that will save and heal them save the name of Jesus show the grace of father we commit ourselves once again into mighty hands and all the dear ones for whom we have prayed this is all together save save us and protect us and secure us under the wings of grace in Jesus name we do pray amen God bless you. Let us all say the general thanks together. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, with thine unworthy servants to give the most unnumbered and hearty thanks for all the goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people. We bless thee for our creation, preservation and all the blessings of this life. But above all for thy inestimable love and the redemption of the whole world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us the due sense of all thy mercies that our hearts may be unfeigned and thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, all without end. Amen. Let us continue to pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who alone workest great marvels, send down upon our bishops, ministers, and deacons, 
and the whole congregation committed to their charge the healthful spirit of the grace and that they may truly please thee pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing grant this o lord for the honor of our advocate and mediator jesus christ amen let us pray almighty god who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee and does promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name thou wilt grant their request fulfill now o lord the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be most expedient for them granting us in the world knowledge of the truth and in the world to come life everlasting amen let us receive the benediction may the grace of our lord jesus christ and the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit rest and abide with all of us for now and forevermore Conclude this service as so all stand together and sing hymn number 149 from praise and worship 149 from praise and worship Peace is there that no 